Welcome to FYI, the four-year innovation podcast. This show offers an intellectual discussion on technologically enabled disruption, because investing in innovation starts with understanding it. To learn more, visit arc-invest.com. Arc Invest is a registered investment advisor focused on investing in disruptive innovation. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. It does not constitute either explicitly or implicitly any provision of services or products by ARC. All statements made regarding companies or securities are strictly beliefs and points of view held by ARC or podcast guests and are not endorsements or recommendations by ARC to buy, sell, or hold any security. Clients of ARC Investment Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. So we're so excited that we just published our latest Tesla valuation model for our 2026 price target. Um, I have here with me, um, I'm Tasha Keeney. I'm here with Sam Corris and Will Summerlin. We're all ARC analysts. Um, Tesla is a great example of how our research converges at ARC. So uh, Will is our AI specialist. Of course, you know Sam, an expert on electric vehicles and their batteries. And I cover autonomous technology and autonomous driving. So uh, first, we'll kick it off by explaining some of the the background of our uh, top-down research and and how it applies here. And then we'll get into uh, the model itself. Sounds good. And, you know, just tying into ARC's research ecosystem here and the convergence, right? We have top-down models for electric vehicles. We've got Will, who's talking about AI and uh, foundation models and training there, and then Tasha from Autonomous. So we all get together and uh, brainstorm, and that's that's how we make the Tesla model, which we'll get to. But I guess to kick things off, we'll start on the electric vehicle side of things. And our top line forecast for electric vehicles is that sales will increase roughly eightfold from 4.8 million units in 2021 to 40 million units in 2026. And that's a global number. Uh, And that'd be a roughly 53% compound annual growth rate each year. And what's really driving this is battery cost declines. And so we use Wright's law, and this is across uh, many different themes and, and technologies, but for batteries, it's so important because the battery is the single largest cost component of the vehicle. And so Wright's law states that for every cumulative doubling of production, you get a fixed percent cost decline. And for lithium ion batteries, that's roughly 28%. And so we think that by 2023, a electric vehicle is going to reach sticker price parity. So that's the upfront cost the consumer sees with a like for like gas powered car. And at that point, uh, it should really be a no brainer. And we think that we're going to see a huge shift in demand towards electric vehicles. With that, I'll pass it to Will to talk about AI. So one of the opportunities we're really excited about within AI is the opportunity for foundation models. And to dig into this a little bit, one of the things that we've seen historically is that the larger models are AI models, the better they perform. Uh, And this is a trend we think will continue. We've seen this with models like GPT-3, which is trained on most of the text from the internet. Um, And we've seen this across DALI and BART and a number of other large language models. We think that the same principle will apply uh, within the other application of AI, which is helping robots move through the physical world. And Tesla has really unique data assets in that they've seen billions of miles across their fleet and use that to train their own models for full self-driving and autonomy. We think there's actually an opportunity for Tesla to make those models openly available so that other developers, other companies can actually build applications and products on top of Tesla's models. And this is what we call a foundation model. So based on our research and big ideas, we think the opportunity for foundation models um, could be worth about $25 trillion in terms of enterprise value by 2030. And we think the market will bifurcate. There will be models that are used to solve problems in sort of digital native context. And so uh, these are models like GPT-3 and DALI that can uh, help edit text or manipulate images uh, or generate stories. And then we think there'll be a different use case, which is helping robots move through the physical world. And we think that'll be a different set of foundation models. So while Tesla hasn't actually openly discussed this strategy, 
We do think it's a possibility, um, especially given Elon's excitement around AI and given their unique data assets, especially given their investments in compute. Um, and so we're very excited to see how that opportunity could manifest. With that, turn it back to Sam and Tasha. Thanks, Will. And, you know, one of the, the biggest potential markets that we see in AI is autonomous driving. And we think that all vehicles in the future, all passenger cars will be electric. So when we talk about autonomous cars, they're electric autonomous cars. Ultimately, why we're so interested in autonomous driving is because we think that it could dramatically lower the cost to get around. So an autonomous taxi could price as low as 25 cents per mile. That's less than half of the cost of driving a personal car in the US, a new personal car. That's really dramatic. It's gonna bring a bunch of people into the ride hail market that are not customers today um, because of that extremely low cost point. Of course, cars will be a lot safer too, but ultimately we think cost is gonna drive demand. And we think that this is such a large opportunity. Um, on a revenue basis, the total addressable market is about $11 trillion. And, and that's really our, our updated work on autonomy. So it could be as cheap as 25 cents per mile for a ride, but we also see a lot of demand at the you know, 50 cents to a dollar range um, for uh, existing uh, customers today that are either you know, traveling around for their own personal needs or for work-related travel. Uh, we've done some analysis on how customers value their time uh, to dimension those price points. Ultimately, we think that uh, the the platform providers or the companies that own the technology stack that allow cars to be autonomous uh, could enjoy, enjoy an enterprise value of 11 to 12 trillion dollars by 2026. So this is really a massive opportunity and one that Tesla is uniquely uh, well set up to, to participate in as it's both a vehicle manufacturer and potentially an autonomous platform provider. And with that, uh, let's get into the model. Yeah, Tasha, let's let's just get to the to the meat of it right off the bat. What is Arc's 2026 price target for Tesla? And then we'll go into the methodology. Right. So our expected value uh, for Tesla stock price in 2026 is four thousand six hundred dollars per share. We got there by uh, we have a, a Monte Carlo uh, simulation that we've run a million times, um, and the expected value is the average of, of all of those simulations. And then how does ARC get to its upside and downside cases? Our bear case for Tesla is uh, $2,900 per share in 2026, and that is the uh, 25th percentile of that million simulation run of a Monte Carlo, Carlo analysis. So in other words, we think um, that 25% uh, of the time, Tesla could be worth $2,900 per share or less. And then our bull price per share is $5,800 by 2026. So um, that is the 75th percentile, or in other words, we think that uh, there's a 25% probability that Tesla could be worth $5,800 per share or more uh, by 2026. So ultimately, you know, this is all, again, a result of the Monte Carlo analysis. And our Monte Carlo model is built up of 38 input variables, uh, which we give a range of possibilities within the model. And ultimately, these are the factors that we think could have some impact on Tesla's uh, five-year price target. You know, 38 inputs is a lot here. Uh, I think, you know, when, I, when we built the model, we then, you know, tested it and we found the, the key inputs. So, so what are those five key inputs that uh, we think are really the main drivers of this model? So our five key inputs are uh, capital efficiency, how the, the maximum uh, production increase that Tesla can get in any given year, so how much they're allowed, they're, they're able to increase production year over year on a percentage basis. We also have an input for uh, how many cars we think will be on the, the ride hill network uh, by 2026. This is um, the potential for Tesla to launch a human driven ride hill network um, by that point. Um, and then we also have the uh, estimated launch year for robo taxis, so for autonomous ride hail, when do we think that launch could potentially happen? 
Um, so while we do, you know, th those are our five key inputs out of the 38. And then, um, you know, you'll notice as you play around with the model, which is open sourced and available on GitHub, uh, that the ones that really affect it the most are um, our assumptions around capital efficiency and autonomy. Great. So before we dive into autonomy, because that's that's really where the the bulk of the value is coming from, maybe I'll just touch on capital efficiency and how we're looking at it and some context around that. And so originally when we were doing research on electric vehicles, you know, we were saying, what is the capital efficiency or how much money needs to be spent for an incremental unit of capacity to be built in the auto industry as it stands. And that number was $14,000. And so that's kind of what we had used and said, okay, this is the baseline if Tesla matches industry average. And so if you go and you look in the model and our blog, you can see that when Tesla first started ramping the Model 3, their capital efficiency was far, far worse. They were at roughly $84,000 per incremental unit of capacity, but they dramatically improved. And in 2021, they were down to $7,700 per incremental unit of capacity, which is pretty remarkable, right? Already half of what the industry average was. And so in the Monte Carlo, we say that in the downside case, uh, they just marginally improve and, and stay at roughly $7,000 per unit, incremental unit of capacity. But in our upside case, we have that cost coming down to $2,000. And I think what's, what's really interesting is if you play with the model, you can see that, you know, this input itself is actually not as meaningful as it was in the past because Tesla is no longer capital constrained. And so what that means is that, you know, their ability to scale production is not based on how much money they have in the bank account, how much money they can spend. It's really based on management bandwidth, whether or not there's supply constraints, uh, which have been particularly relevant over the past year. And so that's where this other key input comes into play, which is the maximum annual production increase. And, you know, this is probably one of the bigger drivers on the vehicle production side of it. But then, you know, Tasha, I'll, I'll hand it to you to talk about autonomous because really the, the launch year and when adoption happens, I think is, is the biggest, single biggest driver for this model. Thanks, Sam. Robotaxis do have, you know, a very large impact on our valuation target. Um, you'll notice that in the blog, we've broken out that uh, they will contribute approximately 60% of the expected value in the model um, can be attributed to Robotaxis. Um, and the we've changed a little bit the way that we've, we've modeled this versus last year. Um, so last year we had a single input, uh, which was the probability of Robotaxi launch within the five-year window. But we changed that this year to have, we, we still have that probability input, um, but we also have the Robotaxi launch year input. And effectively, this is just because I think this is a bit, a little bit closer to how people think of, you know, whether or not Tesla will launch RoboTaxis. It's okay if it happens, which year will it happen, if at all? And so you'll notice that, uh, you know, in our downside case, uh, we're assuming that Tesla launches in 2026. So that would be four years after Elon Musk has said that they uh, he expects to solve for full autonomy. And in the the upside case, we're assuming a launch year of 2023. So again, that would be actually one year after um, what Elon has said could possibly happen. And the mid at the midpoint of our assumptions, it's the 2024 year. So about two years later than expected by the company. And I also just want to point out that 9% of the time in the model, uh, the launch year actually falls out of the window that we're forecasting out of that five years. So effectively, in 9% of our simulations, we're including no revenue um, for autonomous taxis at all. Um, another thing that we updated uh, that I alluded to earlier is uh, how we think of the price points that we'll see in the autonomous ride hail market. 
So, you know, when we first um, did our analysis on autonomous taxis, we saw that they could be priced as low as 25 cents per mile. But ultimately, we think that, um, you know, we've seen, Ride Hail has proven that there is demand around the $2 to $4 per mile price range uh, that we see today. We think that um, because consumers in Western markets, our analysis shows that they value their time at roughly equivalent to uh, average hourly wage for miles driven uh, with the purpose of going to work. So for commuting miles um, at roughly equivalent to hourly wage, and then for non-commuting miles or uh, driving that you're doing for your personal use, that's valued at roughly half of hourly wage. So that gives a, lo a lot of demand in Western markets at price points of about $1.10 to $0.60. Cents. And then in uh, lower income countries, uh, we expect significant demand at the $0.50 cent mile mark. Um, that's because if you look at uh, you know, how Didi is already pricing ride hail options in, in places like China today, it's already pretty inexpensive at about $0.50. Cents. So ultimately, the $0.25 cents per mile price point comes in and we think that this this will be the long tail of, of additional customers that will now be brought into the ride hail market that were not there before. That's where um, you know we see a dramatic change um, in habits and again in, in additional people coming into the market for this extremely cheap service. So ultimately, you know, all of those price points get factored into our model. Uh, we're assuming that uh, once Tesla uh, penetrates a certain segment of the market, uh, if they keep on adding autonomous miles, they fall into the next uh, price point segment. And that's ultimately how you can think of it factoring in. Um, so uh, this, what's, what's the end effect? Well, we think that there's more opportunity or more revenue opportunity in autonomous driving than we previously thought there was. So Tasha, as people go through the model and play with it, um, one, it's like, if you're going to do that, you know, download this on GitHub. Uh, but if people are going to do that, you know, and they have questions or, uh, they don't understand something, what's the best way for people to, to reach out and to interact with us? Because, you know, a big part of ARC's research is this open sourcing and research ecosystem. So what's the best way for people to, to get, uh, involved and interact? Good question. There's really two ways. So for our GitHub nerds out there, um, you can definitely post on GitHub, use the the comments wall there to, to raise any issues that you see with the model uh, or the problem section. Um, and also tweet at us, uh, you know, I am Tasha Ark. Uh, Sam, your, t your handle is? S Chorus Ark. And our director of research, B Winton Ark. Um, we are all available uh, to answer questions on the model, and we'd love to hear your feedback. ARC believes that the information presented is accurate and was obtained from sources that ARC believes to be reliable. However, ARC does not guarantee the accuracy or completeness of any information, and such information may be subject to change without notice from ARC. Historical results are not indications of future results. Certain of the statements contained in this podcast may be statements of future expectations and other forward-looking statements that are based on ARC's current views and assumptions and involve known and unknown risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results, performance, or events to differ materially from those expressed or implied in such statements.